Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea. This is my four day trip to Nusa Penida. Like always, I will be showing you all the vegan food I ate, the adventures I went on, and how much I spent. The most common way to get to Panida Island is by taking fast boat from Sanur Harbor. There are several companies with different schedules to choose from. We went in the morning to catch the boat at 9 a.m. So we decided to have a half day trip in Lembongan first before heading to Panida. The ticket costs 75k per person for a local. Unfortunately, the price doubles for foreigners. Please note the prices shown on the top right corner throughout this whole video is for two. The boat was so packed and uncomfortable, but it's only a 25 minute ride to Nusa Lembongan. I think the most efficient way to get around is by renting a scooter. Not only it saves time and money, you can also feel and experience the sceneries better. However, it is not very safe because most people drive crazy here, so just be careful. Anyway, our first stop was Devil's Tear. There was a construction going on, so we didn't get too close to it. Instead, we tried to see it from this private beach, but the view was blocked, so the only way to see the waves smashing the rocky coves was through my drone. It is also known as the single best sunset spot of the island. Along the way, I noticed many seaweed being sun-dried and learned that seaweed farming is a staple income for most families living on the island. This iconic yellow bridge connects Nusa Lembongan and Nusa Jeningan. Crossing this narrow bridge was so much fun. One of the key attractions of Jeningan is cliff jumping. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to explore Jeningan this trip. We returned to Lembongan for another touristy attraction instead, Mangrove Forest Tour. This is a 20 minute boat tour exploring the forest. We were charged 100k. It was so serene and peaceful, definitely worth experiencing. I also had my very first tragic event of this trip. I flew my drone, but my drone refused to land on a boat, so I panic and try to grab it and pull it down with my hand, but I misplaced my hand. So the propeller spinning at full speed sliced through the skin of my fingertip. I'm just thankful I didn't lose any finger. I just got my fingers wrapped, and now we're gonna eat lunch at Bali Eco Deli. This is a vegan friendly spot on Lembongan Island. It's so friendly. Oh, so good. Forget the pain. Food is my way of coping with literally everything. Whether I'm in a good mood or bad mood, just feed me vegan food and I'll love you. The food here were so tasty and satiating. I always like to end my meal with a good cup of coffee. Oh my god. We headed to this cafe by the beach with a very narrow access. Since I only enjoy drinking white coffee, I always have to look for a cafe that has dairy-free milk option. Ginger and Jammu offers coconut milk. They even serve vegan popsicles. It was really good, but definitely overpriced. 55k for a popsicle? Come on. I needed this refreshment after such traumatic incident. Then it was time to head to Nusa Penida. We chose the cheapest way to get there, which is by public boat. The only problem with this method is you have to wait until there is enough passenger. So we waited for about 40 minutes until it was ready to depart. At the time of recording, the price for local was only 20k. My travel buddy was local Balinese, but I wasn't, so I got charged 10k more. The price triples for foreigners. 10 minutes later, we've arrived. Got a really good deal on this bike. It only costs 15k per day, and we rented for 3 days, 150k. Learn how to bargain. I booked two nights stay at the Dagan Bungalow. It's an affordable yet comfortable homestay, only 150k per night. In the afternoon, we headed out to Crystal Bay to try to catch the sunset. The bottle cup feels like I'm in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Unfortunately, we arrive a bit too late. 
so there was barely any sunset left. But I still enjoy the view. Afterward, it was time for dinner. I chose to dine at Panita Colada Beach Bar after reading so many good reviews online from other vegan travelers. There was an acoustic live band playing that night, so the ambience was on point. Chill and romantic. They have several vegan options to choose from. The staff were all very knowledgeable and helpful. I knew I had to come back here the next day to try all the vegan food they offer. I just want to point out that a lot of frogs and lizards come out to the road at night. Sadly, most of them do get run over by cars. We tried our best to avoid them. Hey! Hey, come on! Come here, baby! Come here! Hey. It's day two before heading to all the tourist spots. We are going to coffee shop first. I need my daily dose of latte. Of course, I decided to have coffee at Panita Colada. The vibe is completely different during the day. Oh my god, so good. I also tried their blueberry muffin and ooh la la. Life is good. The weather was getting unbearably hot. So we rested for a bit, then went to grab lunch at this little Italian fusion bistro. The owner was super friendly and chatty. Oh my god, so good. I was surprised to find out they have vegan mayo and vegan cheese. Everything is made to order, so the quality of the food is top notch. My most favorite dish was the pesto nochi. The chewiness was perfect. After such a hearty meal, the adventure began. Today, we headed to the most famous tourist spot on the island, Glinking Beach. It's known for the T-Rex shaped cliff. The vibrant view here is absolutely breathtaking. Finish my ice cream first, otherwise a monkey will take it. There is a trail access to the beach, but most visitors just stay at the top and enjoy the view. Because the staircases are super steep and there are a lot of aggressive monkeys ready to rob you. If you know me, you would know I am kind of an adrenaline junkie and I'm not afraid to die from stupidity. <laughs> Can you walk in front of me? Yeah. You're good, yeah. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. 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 Don't look at it, don't look at it. No. <laughs> it looked like it was gonna bite you. This is fucking hard. Now I imagine climbing up. Among the visitors who go down, majority would just stop at midpoint. Because you start to risk your life beyond this point. Wow. All this wow. stunt. Wow. What a badass. I chose to continue because I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to be here again. Gotta seize the day while I'm still physically capable to hike. Fucking hardcore hiking. I think that took about an hour just to climb down. The road is so steep. It's just like stone, slippery stones. You have to be careful, watch out your step. And you know, the wooden holder is so flimsy. See? This is fucking dangerous. All the way up there. Shoo, shoo, shoo. We had the beach all to ourselves. I wanted an epic shot of the waves hitting my feet. I thought this one wasn't enough, so I waited for the next big one. Go, 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 fast. I told you, don't go there. I'm protecting my iPhone. <laughs> For some reason, hiking back up wasn't as tough as I expected it to be. 
It's definitely not easy though. <laughs> this was when my noob rock climbing skill come in handy. <laughs> I felt like I burned off all the food I ate during that hike, so it's time to fill up my stomach again. This time we tried another beach bar called Virgin Beach. The place was really nice and spacious, but only the spring rolls could be made vegan. It was quite expensive and the taste was below average. So we moved to another cafe called Wien's Panita Cafe. They have a plant-based section on the menu. We tried the jackfruit taco and the vegan pho. Honestly, the taste was just average, but they do have really good shisha. The next morning, we headed to see another two must-see sites for first-timer, Angel Bilabong and Broken Beach. These two are walking distance from one another. Wow, that's epic! I noticed in a few other Nusa Panita vlogs, some people float and chill in this crystal clear water. But it is in fact so dangerous. Many people have died here, if not, got severely injured by the strong waves. That's why some call it the Devil Billabong instead. On the way to Broken Beach, we passed by Wayan Coffee and decided to take a little break here first. So this is the Broken Beach. Unlike Linking Beach, Broken Beach is not accessible. It can only be admired from above. It's called Broken Beach because of the natural, massive arc landscape. Afterward, we headed to our next day, which was all the way on the eastern coast. The ride there was about an hour. So I saw pictures of this place on Instagram and wanted to experience staying here for a night. This bohemian aesthetic accommodation offers one with nature kind of unique experience. But in my opinion, it's a bit overpriced. Very suitable for young hippie couples. It provides complete utensils, coffee and tea, water heater, even juice mixer. Everything in the mini fridge is included. Soft drink, cold water, fruits, and non-vegan chocolate. The most expensive stay on this whole island. Two juta per night. But yeah, I think they're selling this this view. Leo Oleo, right tempeh, japchai, and nasi goreng. it did say to beware of monkeys, they might come and steal your stuff. So we locked everything and stayed in for the rest of the day. It was storming all night long, so we couldn't go anywhere really. We just ordered room service and watched Netflix. In case you're wondering, this room does not have AC and it's not a closed space. So you get a lot of visitors at night. Especially when it's raining, it gets swarmed by flying termites. So many dead insects on the floor. We left the light on in the restroom, so the restroom look even more tragic. Thankfully, breakfast was included. 
what happened next was probably the biggest loss I encountered on this trip. I wanted to take some cool drone shots. Within the first 5 minutes of flying, everything was going smoothly. But then suddenly, there was a strong wind that blew my drone further and further away. My drone was struggling to fight the wind. With a panic-inducing warning alarm sound, I felt so helpless and I couldn't think calmly. In the end, I just gave up. Out of control. Battery level is low, the aircraft will go to the home point in 10 seconds. Critically low battery. Landing. I lost my drone and most of the footage that I shot yesterday weren't saved either. I don't know, I'm so depressed right now. I'm more sad about losing the footage than the drone because I was so proud of some of the shots. There was even the shot of my finger getting cut, but it's gone. I got cut for nothing. Wow, apple and dragon fruit is the best combination. We initially planned to stay for another night, but I was just not in the mood anymore. I felt like it was a warning sign from the universe. First, my finger got caught, then my drone crashed. If I stayed any longer, something worse might happen. We decided to stop by Diamond Beach before heading back to the harbor since it was nearby. I lost my drone somewhere there. RIP drone. The hiking part was a bit scary, but it's a piece of cake after experience hiking and glinking. The view was absolutely gorgeous, but I was feeling so down after losing the drone, so I couldn't focus on what's in front of my eyes. I just kept thinking of all the things I could have, should have, would have done to at least save the precious footage. At the end of the day, it was a life lesson. Shit happens, I can't turn back time. Instead of dwelling on the past, I should be more present. All we have is now. We still had some time left before departure, so I'm grateful we get to stop by my favorite restaurant again. Positive thinking? At least I got to end the trip with some good vegan food. I recommend taking Angel Billabong fast boat from Nusa Penida to Sanur. Not only the price was good, the seating was spacious and comfortable. Penida is further than Lembongan, so the trip back to Sanur Harbor took about 45 minutes. I was still sad, so I needed more vegan food to fill up the void in me. So yeah, that concludes my 4 day trip to Nusa Panida. If I add up everything including parking, gas, and things like band-aid and medicines, total round up to 5.3 million rupiah. At the current exchange rate, it's about 370 US dollar for 2 people. Pretty reasonable, right? Thank you so much for watching, I hope you find this video helpful. Please support me by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Also turn on notification alerts so you know when I upload a new video. See you!